Abia Fax Hotspot. Today with me on the studio is Mr. Karibe Ojigwe, an international footballer and a politician. Mr. Ojigwe, you're welcome to Abia, Abia Fax Hotspot. It's good to be here. Yes, um, Mr. Ojigwe, in 2015, you ran an election. Um, you tend to go into the Abia State House Assembly to make laws for your people. And unfortunately, you lost that election to someone else who is now uh, in office. But today, you are now back, you know, and you are getting prepared to run the same election one more time. You know. How prepared are you this time around to win the election? Well, I'm very, very, very prepared um, because um, there are there were some things I didn't know at the last election which has come to my knowledge at the moment. I'm preparing differently like what used to be. I thought um, elections were just you do your campaigns and get your people to vote for you and that was that. But it has come to my understanding that it's not that way. It goes beyond, you know, making campaigns, making people know, selling what you want to do for the masses um, um, to them. But now that I have the knowledge about how elections are being run, you are being run in, in peculiar places like my state, Abia State, God's own state. So I'm preparing differently right now. Okay. Um, the person you stood against, Sean, uh, uh, you stood against last, and the last election was, is today the current deputy speaker of the Abia State of Assembly. Given the challenge of him being an incumbent, and to the powerful position he occupies in the state, what do you think your chances are? You know, with him? well, um, I have immense chances of winning the election. I'm a youth, and the youth, um, they are more in popula population. We, are about, we make up about the 60% of all the people in our state, um, being a very young state. And um, um, I have things to offer my people, which he himself um, hasn't been able to achieve in terms of um, uh, what he has accomplished, uh, considering the four years he has been in office. So these are the things. You know, I've been having town hall meetings, letting my people know that I've even changed parties. I'm no more in Abga, that I'm now in APC. Which is to say that um, the way they voted me last time, if they do that this time around, that our votes we count, because we are now in a party that is at the center. And secondly, uh, my people know that I'm coming from you know, a sports perspective. I used to be a soccer player, and um, I've not been part of the political um, scenario all this time. But now that they can see the seriousness in me, not minding the challenges I had last time, that I've been able to prove that I'm seriously, seriously wanting to go, you know, giving them a better representation in the House of Assembly come 2019. Yes, um, Mr. Ojibwe, um, your, the current party you are in now, um, the APC, no doubt had some challenges in terms of partition, you know, within our climate. Mm -hmm. How do you intend to tackle that? How do you intend to convince your constituents you know, who has this perception about the party, this perception about the party? How do you intend to, 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 to convince them to vote for you? Yeah, uh, uh, this is why I've been calling them um, town hall meetings. Um, getting them sensitized, getting them know that this political party is not owned by anybody. This party doesn't be, belong to Buhari alone. It is all a, a political party in Nigeria where people can use as a platform uh, to contest um, election. 
uh, we've been talking to them, letting them know that since even this party, the so-called APC, came into power, our roles have been done. These were things that weren't done by the other side per se. They didn't do any of our roles. The electricity, the, uh, the promise, we are never done. Uh, payments of uh, civil servants, their salaries, you can forget it. They are owed maybe 100 months, and you are not supposed to talk about it even. That is a disaster. What we are talking about is which party can come and maybe get these things changed. Okay, if we should put party aside, let us talk about individuals whom are ready to um, give the people what they want. It cannot be about political party anymore. Whomever that you think that could, that you can trust, that could bring about those things that were discussed in town hall meetings, in our campaigns, in the jingles, then you should vote for the people and make sure these persons are, you know, persons with credibility that you can count on. That if they don't, that you can always call, you know, back out of um, um, wherever that they are representing you. Yes, um, in 2015, you said you won the election. Absolutely. You were making a case that you won the election. Yeah. But you are, you are robbed. Yeah. How do you intend to forestall a repeat occurrence of semi event that happened in 2015? Well, it's very simple. Um, now, the challenge of my agents being changed maybe 24 hours before the election proper wouldn't happen. That would be even President Buhari can come and tell me to change my agents because you must bring people who could not sell out. If you have people in your team, that maybe in a short while could just take anything that we are giving to them and they don't mind what was done, that is um, a terrible mistake. You know, some folks came and said that we are sent by, our, uh, by the leader of our party then. Uh, well, we, we are just unable to confirm it. We tried calling him on the phone for confirmation, which we never got. But such things can happen right now. And um, the people, because I've gone to them personally to go soliciting for their, uh, for their vote, um, bringing them home to come and register those of them that doesn't have their PVCs, they know that there's no way if they come voting me that their votes wouldn't count. It can't happen. And it never just ended um, during the election um, process. Uh, we went up to uh, the appeal court, you know, to see if we could, you know, get judgment about all the TPEX that were used uh, on the election uh, materials that were given to us by INEC. And those things, I'm pretty sure, wouldn't happen this time. Did you go to court? I did. I went up to the appeal court. I was there, but well, we've just learned is our lessons. Okay, um, your party, the APC, just held what could be regarded as a successful uh, congress today, and um, a new a school has just come up, come on board. Mm -hmm. How will you? In your own assessment, how will this success according to the translate into electoral victory come 2019? Well, because we have um, capable hands in the leadership of the party, I'm talking about in our state. But it's still the same hands that, that were there in 2015. Yes, um, continuity is what we think that should happen right now, uh, considering the fact that these are. Um, people, they've been tested and we can trust them. That was why we voted them in again today. You know, if you do a good job, oppositions wouldn't be rising from up and uh, everywhere. But that doesn't mean that 
if they start doing otherwise, that people wouldn't call them back. Uh, they are not just voted into office to go to sleep. They, in fact, their job, you know, has just started. They can start doing what they know best in terms of bringing the party together, those of them whom are contesting, and with their fairness, sincerity, and transparency, I think um, we are taking over the state. And in 2015, um, they had a bad show. What do you think they can do that? They're going to do differently now that they didn't do in 2015. Are you talking about APC? The APC the party. Well, they never had the caliber of people that are now in this party at that time. Nobody paid attention to if APC were in this state, nobody knew. Now, you have the likes of Ojo Zocalo, uh, Mascot Ojo Zocalo, uh, Bibi Apugo, uh, Uchoga, the likes of um, former deputy governors, uh, Akomas, and so on and so forth, Chome. So all these guys are now the crop of leadership that we have in this party. And I don't think any of them would want their credibility to be undermined anyhow. They will want to protect and make sure because they must deliver. I think these are folks that their name rings bell in terms of them delivering wherever they are. Okay, Mr. Jigwe, finally, what is your message to your constituents? Well, I would want them to pick up their PVCs and um, make sure they vote me the same way they did last time. And I promise them that this time, that their votes will definitely count. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Jigwe. You're welcome, sir.